Good morning, guys. Can you hear me? All right, great. Gonna check some gappers. What's news on this high ho? Holy shit, Google took a stake in this company. Oh, it's a mid cap. Okay, never mind. I thought it was a micro cap. Yeah, it's a mid cap. All right, wasn't as small as I thought it was. <clears throat> Huge float also on ADT. Natural gas is having a strong day. This Mar, I've been long for a, for a couple of weeks since it gapped up on heavy volume this day here. I sold a, a third in pre-market. Uh, I sold uh, 50,000 out of 150,000 shares. I think this thing could, you know, I think Bitcoin and every, all of that is just getting started. So I think this thing could go easily go for five, six bucks or something or more. So I'll keep two thirds of my shares, even though I'm sitting on a double for now. I think it could double from here. <clears throat> so I went since we strong re, uh, since we closed really really strong uh, on. Uh, wait, I I need to tweet this stream out. I haven't tweeted it. Wait a sec. Uh, Whiskey is on the way. Oh, sounds awesome. Looking forward to getting the whiskey. I'm gonna get drunk on the stream. I'm gonna do a drunk short school or swing training school. What can go wrong? How much are am I up on Mara? Well, 
do the math. I had 150,000 shares in the 140s, and now it's at three bucks. That's so much I'm up on it. I bought Riot also the same day, but Riot is weirdly weak. It, it stopped me out like three days later for a loss. But I'm thinking, you know, the whole sector gets momentum. I may rebuy this uh, Riot. Yeah, I think everyone should get TC2000. I think it's the best. It's, 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 a great, it's great for scanning and watch lists and everything. All of that stuff. <laughs> Jesus Christ, my cat is on my keyboard right now. No eyes on Chumia? What do you mean? PBI? Uh, for what? I don't see any setup here. Just a random stock doing some random things. I'm not watching Chumia? Ch for what? I'm long this thing. You mean for a short? Yeah, maybe there could be a day trade short in it. I don't care. I think this thing is gonna go to 25, 30. Maybe not. I think it could do an overstock. That one too, you know, it got very extended, you know. There were some day trade shorts in it and then just keep going. Yeah, Zoom is one of my top setups. Okay, let's go through my portfolio. TER, it's just a random stock. Guys, you gotta get into momentum leaders. This is, you know, ADR 3.3%. It's just, it's just a slow random semi stock. It's a laggard too. There's so many better ones. Avoid this one. All right, let's see here. So BA, short since last week. It just keeps going lower, building lower highs. This thing can't rally. So that's, I'll, I'll uh, you know, I think this thing goes to sub 150. TDOC, earnings entry last week. Looks very good. I think high twos, high 200s are coming. UAL, I'm short from last week. This one, I covered some on Friday. Not really super weak yet. We'll see how it acts. If it closes strong today, I'm gonna cover it. Uh, VIR undercut the 20 a couple of times, but really never. You know, it, it's kind of holding here. But I'm gonna use Friday slows as my stop. AVLR last Friday entry grinding higher nicely. Silo. Looks decent from entry. LAC, I think this one goes double digits. Uh, CS from last earnings just keeps grinding higher. TTD, Friday entry. I was very st uh, close getting stopped out midday, but I didn't. And now it's uh, gapping higher. So that's awesome. Uh, I did get stopped out of Roku, though. That one stopped me out. And now it's gapping higher. <laughs> okay. Uh, lake never got going but it's still building higher lows so we'll see tesla i'm short i had a big big position on friday covered some into the close to you know i didn't really have that much margin left um, so i had to cl uh, cover some but i still held uh, let's see how many shares 2700 shares overnight i think i had like 4000 shares intraday on friday so that was a nice trade Showed big relative weakness on Friday, huge relative weakness. Actually, from Wednesday to Friday, it showed relative weakness every single day. And then on Friday, it finally broke down while the Nasdaq was strong. So we'll see if, if these 10 and 20 EMA start acting as res a resistance areas. This thing could fade back to 1200 or something. D dog from, I think, Wednesday entry, gapping up, looks really nice. W, this is a beast from... Was it the Monday or Tuesday entry? Something like that. This thing is up, way up now. Peloton, nicely from also Monday or Tuesday entry. P 
Pinterest, I bought some late day. It built higher lows all day, and then it took out this tight range late day. So I bought uh, 30,000 shares into the close, or well, like in the last 30 minutes or so. And now it's gapping up, sold some pre-market. I'm gonna sell down several stocks a little bit at the open since they're all gapping up. Belief, uh, I bought it also on Friday, gapping up today. This is why you go and get into the leaders, okay? The leaders start leading. No need to uh, mess around with some laggard piece of shit stocks. Jumia gapping up a bit. I sold a little bit pre-market, but I think, you know, we'll see what it does. GPTC is opening up a little bit. SRNE I sold some on Friday, and um, I'm going to use Friday's lows as my stop. Codex gapping up, this one we bought here, or actually, uh, this is the one I chased, I chased the chase. I overbought like 12,000 shares, and then I sold those for a penny profit because I was uncomfortable with the size, because the stock was so thin, and and now this thing is up 30%. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have scalped those 12,000 shares for a penny, but I still have the core. Uh, I've only sold a little bit of the core. We'll see where this one goes. And Mara, this one is randomly up 50% pre-market. Okay. <laughs> Chumia Fundamentals, who the hell cares? Yeah, who cares? The best stocks are piece of shit stocks. Like, the, the best stocks are like frauds and stuff. Like, half of the COVID names are frauds. Like, half of these things, IBIO and Codex and INO and all of these, they, they're gonna go down like... They, they're never going to make any money of their COVID stuff. It's just a pump. You know, you, I have legit stocks and then I have pump stocks. LAC is a pump stock. Chumia is a pump stock. But it doesn't matter. Many times these are the best ones. But these things are mostly retail driven. There are no big institutions buying these. And then you have stocks like TDOC, AVLR, TTD. D dog W. These are fund driven. These these are institutional driven stocks. <clears throat> level two. What what do you need level two for if you're swing trading? What a waste of time. <laughs> DTSS. Uh, is it this one gapping up today? Yeah, it is. Uh, install proprietary. Okay, I don't know what it is. How's the new car? It's awesome. And I already scratched one of my rims when I tried parking. I fucking suck. <laughs> Not a big scratch, but it's super annoying. Those things are expensive. Yeah, I'm gonna upload um, the, a video on, on Twitter later. Dilution? Oh, that's what Riot is not going. Too much dilution. Okay, I get it. Okay. Well, I mean, look, if the momentum comes in, at some point it may not matter. Like, these things can go anyways. When Robin Hooders here of this one. <laughs> They, they, they can't be looped fast enough. Trading view is definitely a very good alternative for TC2000. I don't know how about, uh, about their scanning or watch list management. Their sharding is very good. I think trading view sharding is better than TC2000 because you can go back, uh, f uh, longer, in, back longer in time. But I don't know about their watch list and scanning and stuff like that. Uh, let's see, cruise lines are all gapping down. I'm probably going to ignore them. I do like Square. No, I don't like Square. They report in two days. Nope, I, I don't like Square. Well, I like it, but they report in two days. There's no way I can buy it here. Uh, but I do like um, 
with the NIO is getting up. I'm just gonna quickly look at the ones I'm gonna focus on. This NVAX is an insanely nice looking flag, but man, is it gonna, you know, I don't know how much upside does it have left? They should release data or some kind of some stuff. They were supposed to release it last week, I think, and then I heard they were gonna release it on today, and we'll see. Uh, I do like Roku also, but also again, it reports in two days. I don't know, but I do like Zoom. If, if Zoom can take out this 259, 260 area or high 250s, stay above the 20 day. I think this one is gonna be a big one. TME, I like like China names are really strong. They're all flagging Baba, JD. Tencent Music, Tencent, they're all, oh, no, wait, Tencent, they're all in big bull flags. China and Tal, another China education name. Big bull flag, well, not a big bull flag, but very, very strong. <clears throat> okay, let's see. I don't really have any main watches right now. I, I'll have to wait and see what triggers and how things look like. I'm gonna focus on sizing down on some stocks out of the gate, like selling tiny, tiny pieces of some of these gappers. A lot of alerts triggering out of the gate. Jesus Christ. Natural gas stocks are strong. EQT and RRC. Okay, let's keep shattered to a minimum in the first 30 or so minutes because I won't have time to respond to any of it because I am busy trading. Okay, I bought a starter, uh, 7,000 shares on Zoom. This thing is uh, really, really good looking. And they have earnings in like a month, so I don't have to worry about that. Or we don't have to worry about that, I guess. I just bought a little bit more. I have 10,000 shares of Zoom. Again, lows of the day as always uh, my stop. Zoom is going straight up for now. That's good.
sold a tiny bit of TTD. Just start selling these tiny pieces into strength. Pinterest too, I'm gonna sell a tiny piece here. Straight up from it. I'm selling like 5-10% of my position at a time. You know, every three, five, seven percent on these uh, on these things, on the institutional quality names. The pumps they can double, triple very easy. So those I'm conservative with. W big move overnight, selling a tiny piece. Mara looks like it's fading from the open, that's fine. AR, another <clears throat> natural gas stock starting to move. Cruise lines are looking like death here. Ten cent music looks really good. But I, I'm kind of maxed out on the long side right now. I, I'm not gonna play, ar play around more on the long side for now. Alibaba looks great, man. The China names look really good. Again, I, I just can't take on more long exposure. Um, I'm kind of heavily, heavily, heavily. long already I was very close buying PDD yes, uh, on Friday if you guys remember but I hesitated on it and went straight up and I never I didn't want to chase it in the high 80s at low 90s it's a big move Instead, I bought Beely. Yep, leaders are leading. All the strongest stocks, those are the ones that are making the biggest moves. The ones that show the best relative strength. That's why you keep focusing on the leaders. I mean... A lot of them, I'm not in all of them, but I am in uh, a good amount of those, of the leading names. This GDS looks really good. It's a shoppy name, not really a leader, but it looks like a pretty decent one. <coughs> Net this looks good. Very slow name. But again, the China ones are strong. Vips had a nice breakout on Friday. Not a leader, it was a shoppy one, but you know, the, all the China names are strong. The China leaders. Oh, it was Portnoy pushing Mara. Wait, does he have that kind of juice pre-market? I don't know. Oh, I... Uh, 
Any thoughts on UPS? Uh, c c come on, guys. It's United Parcel Service. This is not a trading stock. ADR is 2.1%. The average daily run is 2... You, you want to see at least 2-3 times that for a, for a stock. This is not a trading stock. Avoid UPS. You want to be in fast stocks. If you want to make a lot of money, you got to be in the fast stocks. Not in some sluggish, you know, boring stocks. So who's short? Uh, nah, I don't know. I mean, it could work for a day trade. I could work. Um, maybe for a day trade. I'm not really looking at it. NIO, China Electric EVs, really, really strong. Really nice, nice looking short. Really good looking short. Yeah, Qcom is strong, but it's kind of a you know slower type of a name. But you know, it so far it's been explosive. It's in it's a semi stock, but I'd rather buy S. You know, I would have rather bought Soxel instead of this one. Yeah, NIO looks good. It does. <clears throat> and also Nat Gas names like RRC, EQT, and AR look like they were very strong. Workhorse is taking out Howies of the Day. This one I almost have to own. I bought 100,000 shares. I um, I have to own this thing. I, I can't. It's, it's a very... Um, like, it's a huge, big flag here. I can't ignore this thing. And also they had news that Lordstown is uh, merging with a SPAC. So this it, it may f finally go. Like if this stock doesn't go now, it will never ever go. This workhorse. Twitter. Yeah, Twitter is weak. Yeah, Twitter is about to lose the 20 day. Yeah, Twitter. Avoid Twitter. It's showing a weakness. Not truly really what you want to see. This IDEX looks a bit interesting. Wow, Zoom, what a move. Holy shit. This is, guys, you gotta be on these these things. You, you can't, you know, look at them the day after. Oh, look at this. What a nice breakout it had. You gotta anticipate these things. And as, this soon, they, as soon as they start breaking out, that's when you buy them. I have 259 average on this thing. 10,000 shares. You gotta be on these things. The prepared trader wins. No, Beely broke broke out on Friday. This is just a follow-through move. Beely broke out on Friday, guys. 
it's not breaking out today, it broke out on Friday. Oh, workhorse. Uh, this thing, I mean, this thing could easily make a 50% move from it. I wouldn't be surprised if this thing goes to like mid 20s or something if it really gets going. Too bad I got scared out of square on, uh, what was it, Thursday. Now it's really going. What was the other one I got scared out of? don't remember the ticker oh well I'm fully invested now so that's fine no a shoey no I never traded this thing this thing had a breakout on uh, on Thursday yeah Pinterest I, holy shit I didn't see it wow I need to sell a little bit more wow what a move I bought 30,000 shares on, uh, uh, let's see, uh, high 33s. I've sold uh, 4,000 so, so far. <clears throat> Scaling out as it goes higher, moving my stop higher too. Let's see here. Seeing a bit, raising some stops here. <clears throat> Tesla looks strong. We'll see how it acts here. Maybe if it doesn't get rejected here in the high 1400s, I'll just cover it. Yeah, NVAX is flagging crazily. Crazy looking flag. Covering some BA tiny bit. And UAL too. These things are working really nicely. Codex looks like a beast. And um, yeah, no, actually, ADT has like a seven hundred million float. It's a six bill, according to. Uh, Marketsmith. Actually, I don't know which one is right. TC2000 or Marketsmith. No, yeah, Marketsmith is correct. 
ADT has 745 million float. That's like huge, but it's working. Yeah. I wonder why Google just didn't buy them outright though. Wow, it's getting halted. What are you doing? The halt game on a 700 million float stock? Never seen that before. I hope some of you got it opening range highs. I totally missed it. Or I wasn't really paying attention at it at all. Yeah, me is weirdly weak though. It's reversing down. What are the other China names doing? Baba looks great. JD looks great. Beely looks great. PDD. Something is wrong with TME. I don't know what. What is Spotify doing? Spotify is failing too. Maybe it's the whole sector that's. Oh, looks like it's acting weird. Okay. Yeah, avoid stuff like stuff like Costco. The, guys, don't even look at something. This thing you will you will never make any money trading something like this. It's too slow. It's way too slow. Look at this move. This is an eight percent move. You want stocks that can go up fast. This is just a random shoppy stock. You don't you shouldn't even be looking at this. If you're getting stuff like this in your scans, you're scanning wrong. Scan for stocks that are volatile, stocks that have an average daily range of at least 4%, maybe even 5 or even 6%. Nothing, you, you should never even look at something like this, like Costco. If you want to make money, you got to be in fast moving stocks. I'm gonna show you. I'm, we, we're gonna do a swing trading school in about 10 minutes. Uh, I'm gonna go through a little bit about uh, of my scans. I'll show you some good setups. I'm gonna. I'm thinking about doing a swing trading school like pretty much every day. Yeah, average daily range. No, not true range. Daily range. We're gonna go through it later. About 10 minutes. Guys, ignore Costco. There's ignore. Just don't talk about it. There's nothing there. It's 1.5% ADR. No reason to trade something like this. Codex could go, it's already went. It stopped like what? It's up 14%. It already went. Can? Yeah, it's a Bitcoin related name. It's uh, it's too thin for me. But yeah, can is a good one. Good one. You get five stars. This is a good setup. Very, very good setup. Hot sector. It had a big move off the lows. Went up 60%, pulled back, found support on these 10 and 20 day moving averages. And now it's been going sideways for the past two weeks and building higher lows. You see this? It's building higher lows and now it had a range break here. And it's a hot sector. It's a crypto related name. It's a Chinese Bitcoin miner or whatever it is. This is a five star. This is a great swing trading setup. A 
Okay, let's start, uh, let's start the swing trading school right now. This is the type of setup you want to look for. This looks exactly like Chumia when I bought it. I bought it on this day here. Can looks exactly like it. Okay. Now, I'm not going to say Can is going to double from here in the next couple of weeks. But it's a very good setup. And I'm going to introduce you to another concept, which is average true range. You can see it down here on my charts. You can get it by doing add plot, average true range. And then you just pretty much just size it down. So you can only see this number. And I also change the color to black. So I just want to see the number. I don't, I don't want to see the chart. So that is the AD average true range. That's pretty much, that's the intraday range. It doesn't account for gaps. It's 27 cents, okay? And right now the stock is up 37 cents. So it's up more than the average daily range, which means, you know, it's a bit, maybe a bit late to buy it here. I usually don't buy the stock if it's up more on the day than its average true range. Preferably you want to get, get, get in when the stock is only up point, you know, a third or half or two thirds of its average true range. Uh, so this one, I, you know, I wouldn't maybe buy it here. Um, you know, this is another one, you know, you, you kind of have to be, you know, scan for this. You got to be on top of this right out of the gate when the market opens. But it's a five star setup. That's my point. It looks exactly like Chumia. Well, ADR also includes the gaps. Average daily range, it also includes the gaps. So if I, <clears throat> while the average true range doesn't. Like for example, this can, it also gapped up. Let's see how much did it gap up. 250 was Friday's close and it opened at 262. So it capped up 12 cents. So you have to add that also to here. So, or actually you, you, you don't have to, but, but you know, it's up, it's up quite a bit from Friday's close. Ideal entry would have been in the like mid 270s, high 270s or something. Or you wait for a little bit of a pullback. So that's a good setup. Five star setup if you, if you scan for it. And fought it on your scans. And it's in one of the hottest sectors too. Bitcoin, Ethereum, all of these things are just starting to break out from multi-year basis. NIO. Uh, NIO, uh, no. Well, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, look, it looks decent. It has to take out highs of the date. It has to take out this $13 area, or at least today's highs. Right now, it looks like maybe getting rejected of the 20-day moving average here. But if it reclaims, you know, it could go. One of the hottest sectors, China is hot. Guys, let's just put tickers, not the name of the company. Yeah, Beijing, um, not my type of setup. No, I, I wouldn't, nah, not my type of setup. And right now it's a bit late to buy it anyways. Um, because it kind of undercut the 20 day and then it just, you know, I see it like the, the, the principle is correct. Like it has a big move, pulls back, puts in some tight candles and then kind of takes out that range. Uh, but not personally my type of setup. NVTA. Um, Yeah, it's a hot sector, made a big, it's just a shoppy one. I don't know. It's maybe a three star setup at best. I would say avoid. Um, I would say avoid on this one. That's what, you know, look, let, let's, let's do a scan. L look, what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to be quiet for a few minutes. I need to check up on my own trades right now. Uh, we'll continue the swing trading school in two minutes.
Tesla, I'm sizing down if it takes out highs for the day. Oh shit, Workhorse went. Oh, I wanted to buy another 50,000 shares. Looks like that's not gonna happen now. This is the one I took a $200,000 loss on on Thursday. I had 150,000 shares twice, got stopped out both times. And now it looks like it's gonna go and I only have 100,000 shares. I love it. <sighs> Trading is so easy. Saying with the biggest sarcasm. <laughs> okay, so let's see here. I'm gonna want to do one little scan. Let's see, plug. Oh, plug actually found support on the rising 50 day and now it's bouncing. There you go. Wow, run looks like a good setup for tomorrow. CRSB looks like a decent setup. Thin, a little bit thin, thin for me, but looks like a decent setup. But I'm gonna go through the basics of uh, just a. I'm gonna show you just a very simple swing trading method. Very simple. There is no reason why you could can't double your account year in year out and in a very good market more than double your account just you know with it's just one simple trading method very simple very basic i'm gonna go i'm gonna show the just the setups i mean uh, the setups i've traded this way so for example see like this is a recent buy from thursday so what you want to see is you have a big move and then you start seeing this, you know, sort of like consolidating, find support on these moving averages. Usually it's a 10, 20 or 50. This is a, bit, this is a little bit slower one lately. It found support on the 50, built higher lows, went to new highs, pulled back, put in a tight range. Okay. This is what I saw on Thursday. I bought it right here, like 68. I actually bought it like the day before, but I got stopped out. And now, so far, it hasn't had any follow through yet, but this thing could very easily go to 80. So what you <clears throat> what you can do is you, you can sell like a, a half after three to five days. You sell half and then you use the 10 day moving average as a trailing stop. Then you move your stop to break even and use the 10 day moving average as your trailing stop. Like if it closes below the 10 day, you sell it. I'm gonna show T doc. Uh, well, this is not a good example either because it hasn't really gone yet. I bought it on Thursday on this day here, obviously. Um, I'm gonna show you guys. Okay, so Thursday, where did I buy it? It, it reported earnings on this day. Uh, so again, a big, big move. It's a momentum leader, right? It finds support on this 20-day, 50-day moving average. It keeps surfing these moving averages. 
And the last time it pulled back, it found support on the 20 day, built higher lows, and then it broke higher on earnings. And I bought it, let's see, what's my average? 225. 220, where is it? Two, high 225s. Here's my entry 225 80s. And then you use kind of, usually I use the low of the day as my stop. Um, but since this thing opened, actually gapped down below uh, previous day's lows, I used like if it went uh, like red to green or green to red as my stop. And right now my stop is to, uh, 219, low 290s. Okay, VIR, another one I'm in. I bought it here. Hot sector. This is a little bit of an uh, other type of setup uh, because it's not up uh, a lot uh, lately. Like it's more in a bigger base, right? You have a big base here. Uh, but this is where I bought it. Uh, Lows of the day I stop, and you know, it's been grinding higher. It's. Um, Surfing the 20 day moving average. You can clearly see this yellow line surfing the 20 day. If it closes below that, I'm out. Right now, it's holding it very well. It tried to undercut a couple of times, but closed above. And looks like it's gearing for another move. And it's actually right here. It's a good setup. Like, if this thing starts breaking out tomorrow, you guys need to be on this thing. This thing could go to 60 plus. If it starts breaking this like mid 40, mid high 48 area, low 49s tomorrow, you gotta be on it. AVLR, another one. Bought recently, uh, Wednesday I think, right here. Look at where it found support. Per bounce perfectly on the 50 day. And here it also had a pretty decent setup uh, that I uh, passed on uh, when it you know, found support on the 20 day every single time, built higher lows, and then it start broke out of this range with higher lows, with higher volume. That one was very good. And you could have sold uh, half after three to five days, either on this day here or here. And then you use the 10 day as your trailing stop and you would have gotten stopped the rest on this day here. Uh, GBTs is another type of trade, so let's ignore that one. CES is another type of trade, so I'm gonna ignore that one. Uh, because I'm, I'm just showing you one specific type of setups here. D Dog, I was already in the trade, but this is a five star setup. I didn't buy it because I was already in it. But another one had a big, big move, big earnings winner, but this is also something I'll. Uh, let, let's just ignore all fundamentals and all stuff. That stuff, all you need to focus on is, you know, in big, the sh strongest stocks. You have a big, big move. It serves the 10 day. This is a very strong stock. It serves the 10 day. It did undercut it, but it reclaimed and started building higher lows. And then you have tight range and starts breaking out on higher volume. And again, you get to just use the 10 day moving average. Now it's gonna not gonna be perfect. You're not gonna nail any tops or bottoms or stuff like that, but. You would have sold half somewhere here, and then you would have sold the other half here on this day here. Uh, Lake is also it, Lake is a similar, also same type of trade. Like I bought it here, unfortunately close back into the range, in the range without uh, stopping me out though. Higher lows, hot sector. It's a mask stock. You have this range. It's a momentum leader. Serves the 20 day, keeps building higher lows, getting tighter and tighter. And right now, you know, it, it didn't break out yet, but it looks like he wants to eventually. Peloton, this one is still hurts looking at it. I passed on this one. But again, on March lows, made a big move. Made a big move. It doubled quickly of the March lows, pulled back, found support on the rising 20 day, and then it got a bit tighter. Not, it's a little bit more of a subtle setup, uh, but uh, you know, I, uh, it looks pretty decent. Built higher lows and then it broke out on higher volume. This is a few days before earnings, that's why I passed on it, and you know, now it's higher. And I rebought it. Wait, where did, where did I rebuy re it? I'm in it right now. Uh, 6350 is my average. Which day did I buy? Yeah, this day here. This is where I bought it. 
this day. I, I think it was last Monday. You know, it keeps finding support on a rising 20 day. Here it found support, here, here, here. And uh, then it, you know, it's some, uh, okay, it's not really that kind of a good setup like I'm trying to show you, but, you know, it's been working so far. This is more of a like fundamental story. It showed my, a bunch of relative strength and stuff like that. Uh, but I'm not going to go much into it right now. I'm going to try to keep these uh, a sh a swing trading school sessions short so you don't get bombarded with a lot of information. I'm going to do this daily. Uh, let's see, Chumia. So Chumia was another one. This one I've talked about a lot the past few days. This is a five star chart. Yeah, big move. This thing goes up 230%. And this is also like, there's a fundamentals uh, in included. Well, it, or not, actually, it's like a pump stock. A very influential pumper on Twitter is on this thing. And well, let's just say he's, it's working out pretty nicely. Uh, you know, you, you need to memorize these setups. Look at where it found support. Like the strongest ones find support on a 10 day. The strong ones, the 20 day, and the, well, slower ones on the 50 day, generally. Tesla, like here's, there's a lot of good setups on this one, okay? Like there was a, like a more subtle setup somewhere here. Like this was, let, let's just imagine like when the stock was up here, like near the highs of the day, like this candle looked really good. Now it happened to close week, but it never took out the lows of the day. So you wouldn't have gotten stopped out. Unfortunately, I passed on this one. But look at what would, have, what would have happened if you had used the close below the 10 day. This is why I all want you to guys to use the close of the 10 day as a trailing stop for at least like a third or maybe even half of your uh, uh, position. Because look at this thing, look at the move it did without closing it below the 10 day moving average. Here it actually gapped down, but reclaimed. And here it closed above it. And next day it gapped down, but immediately reclaimed and closed above. So you wouldn't have gotten stopped out. This is why, and you wouldn't have gotten stopped out until here, this day here. So you would have, you would have caught a hundred and, well, actually at the highest, this thing was up 185%. This is, this is the logic behind, uh, you know, trailing with a 10 day moving average. These home runs, you catch few of these, you're going to make a lot of money. And this is great about swing trading versus day trading. You don't have to sit there and scalp for stupid small moves, sit around your entry, constantly look for new trades, looking for new action. You can just sit in it, just have patience. Obviously it's easier said than done. But there is a logic behind all of these things because they work. And here, here's another setup I traded. More subtle one, but off the March lows, made a big move, started surfing the 10 day, then the 10, 20 day got really tight. And then on this day here, I bought. It actually didn't break out of this range completely, but I anticipated the breakout. Next day, I think it was a Monday. It gapped up. I added more in the opening range highs. And then, big move. And I was long. I, I, I did get shaken out uh, when it closed below the 10 day here. Uh, but I did rebuy on this day here. So, like, if you remember, I was long this whole move. Like, here, I was long here. And then we added here. And then it went up like another 27% in like overnight, pretty much. So, you know, you got to memorize these setups. There's a lot of money. If you just, you know, there's, there's you know, if you master just this one setup, you, you will never have to work a day in your life. You're going to be your own boss. And if you really get good, you can make a lot of money. There's no reason why you can't make many millions trading this just one setup. TTD on Friday, I bought it. And all of those who were on the stream on Friday remember me buying this thing. Opening range highs. Five star setup. Big, big move. Pulls back. Finds support on the 20 days. Starts building higher lows. 
has this range break and so far it hasn't had a lot of follow through but I think it can go to 500 plus. Zoom today, exact same setup. Big, big move. Find support on the rising 20, then the rising 50 day. Like this thing keeps finding support on a 50 day, like it did here, 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 and now here. And this is a break. There's no reason why this thing can't go to 300 eventually. APT. This one I bought here. Like this was more of an anticipation. Like this is another type of setup, but let's focus on this one. This was a secondary entry where I added. Another five star setup, you have a big move off the lows, pulls back, goes sideways, gets tight, finds support on a rising 20 day, puts in narrow candles and then breaks out on high volume. And it keeps, keeps going, still keeps going. SRNE, I bought it on Thursday. Actually, I bought it here on this day too. This one I messed up. Um, I bought it here. We had a big move. This is like a hottest sector. It's a COVID-19 stock. Find su found support on the rising 20 day. Started breaking out and look at the move. And unfortunately, I got shaken out here at six bucks. I didn't follow my own rules. The close below the 10 day. I would have otherwise get gotten stopped out here somewhere on this day here. And then I rebought now on Thursday, on this day here. And uh, on Friday, it made a huge move. W, another one. I bought it here. Because this was showing, this was one of the stocks with the biggest relative strengths. Um, <clears throat> in the like mid-July pullback, like early mid-July pullback we had in the markets. This thing showed uh, was one of the stocks that showed the best strength. It barely pulled back. It was back at all-time highs in no time. And this thing is up 900% from the lows. Like if you have a stock that's up 900% in a few months, and the market weakness can't bring it down, th the stock is trying to tell you something. It's yelling at you. This stock was literally yelling in our faces. Hey. I want to go higher. If the market weakness stops, I'm going to go higher. And that's exactly what happened. We bought it on this day on stream, opening range highs. And now look at this thing. I've, I've been selling tiny pieces every single day. And I think, you know, it goes where it has to go. I'm, I'm using the 10 day as my uh, trailing 10 day stop. As my uh, closing uh, stop, as my uh, um, moving, well, trailing, trailing stop. Man, I don't even know what the hell I'm talking anymore. I hate talking. This is why, why I hate talking. I don't even know what the hell I'm saying. Okay, Beely, another one. This one I did buy here. On this day here. Uh, not as clean as of a setup, but it, 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 was, it showed like super strength. Just riding the 10 day, had one narrow range candle and then it broke out here. Boom. I did get stopped out, I think it was on this day, somewhere here I got stopped out and then I got back in on Friday. Look at this thing. It pulled back, found support on the rising 50 day, put in narrow candles, put higher lows. And boom, break out on high volume. This one I bought after the stream ended, like uh, a couple of hours in this uh, trading session. And now today it gapped up having nice follow through. That's what leaders do. Leaders, leaders lead. Pinterest is another type of trade. I'm going to ignore this one for now. Workhorse, exactly the same logic. Big, big move, pullback, found support on a rising 20 day, building higher lows. And it has a big range break here. It's actually the same logic, and I'm I am long 100,000 shares currently. I may add another 50, 100,000 shares depending on how it acts later. Codex, <clears throat> this one, you guys remember it very correctly when I chased the chase. I actually bought it initially here, but I got stopped out on this day here. Uh, I got shaken out. I I I had a little bit too tight of a stop, but. 
it actually found support on the rising 50 day. Look at this thing. This thing always finds support on the 50 day, right? Here, here, just keeps riding, it keeps surfing the 50 day. These are on, the only technical indicators you need the 10 day, the 20 day, and the 50 day moving averages. You do not need anything else. And you don't even need to look at intraday charts. This is all you need. This is all you need. To make millions, this is all you need, literally. Nothing else. You don't even need to look at the intraday chart. You don't need to look at stupid level two. Fuck level two. Fuck intraday charts. It's all noise. All you need. And then I rebought on this day when it started rebreaking. <clears throat> because you have you have a, like a tight range and keep surfing higher, higher, you know, eventually the stocks break, break either way. And, you know, you got to buy them when they break out. And this one broke, and this is the day I chased the chase. Those of you in the chat, they remember it. I'm not going to go into it. And now, look at it now. And Mara, this one, this was another type of trade. Wow, it's back at highs of the day. Look at that. I wouldn't be surprised if this thing goes to five, six bucks. Absolutely not. All right, guys, that was uh, swing trading school. I'm going to do it like 10, 15, 20 minutes every day. Uh, <clears throat> I've talked enough for today. That was it. You got to memorize those setups. Tomorrow, I'm going to go through one of my scans. I'm just too tired of it talk right now oh shit riot i need to buy some or maybe i don't we'll see okay let's get catch up on chat oh wow guys you really like to type stuff in chat when i when i'm talking Yes, I stream every day when the market is open. What do I mean by hot sector? A hot sector is when <coughs> several stocks in a sector, like let's say uh, COVID, right? COVID-19, coronavirus name, like there's coronavirus stock. Like there, there's so many stocks that have gone up 500 to 1000 plus percent in the past three, four, five months, okay? That's the hot sector, right? When you see a good setup on a stock in that sector, you know, there's a good chance it will follow through. Or like, you know, instead of, you know, buying some random stock in a random sector, like versus buying a stock in a sector where nothing is running and only one stock is running, right? That's kind of sketchy. Why is just one stock running in a whole sector? You want to be in the sectors where a lot of stocks are making big moves and breaking higher. That, that's, a, that's what I mean by a hot sector. How do I enter on this setup? Usually you buy it opening range highs. Like when it takes out the first one minute or five minute candle. Uh, but you really don't even need to look at the uh, intraday chart. You really don't. You just have to pay attention. Where, when are they breaking the ranges? That's just visually on the daily chart, like NVAX. You know, if it starts breaking that 150 area, you would see it on the daily chart. 150, 151. And then you have to pay attention to average two range, okay? Is the stock... Like... Sometimes they gap up a little bit, but you have to look at, okay, if I buy, let's say the stock gets to, like, what is at 153, okay, let's say, and it closed at 147 today, and tomorrow it uh, is at 153 intraday, then you just look at, okay, it's up six bucks intraday, it's up six dollars, but the average true range is 13.6, so it's up less than half of its average true range. That means you can buy it as long as the good setup is good. And then you have a stop at lows of the day. And then at the three to five days, you sell half, move your stop to break even, and just keep trail on the 10-day moving average. Now, this is, I just want to show you this one. 
this is also the reason why you should use the 10-day moving average. We bought this thing on stream. This is a five-star setup. Memorize this. The hot sector, COVID-19 stock, like vaccine name, right? Perfect five-star setup. As a big move, pulls back, finds support on the rising 20-day, puts in a ra uh, like a tight range, and then breaks out on high volume. We bought it. Unfortunately, I sold it way too early. I sold it in the like high 70s or something. I didn't wait for it cl first close below the 10 day because, you know, I was up, what, 70% in just a week or two. I like sometimes holding a big winner is the hardest thing to do. And look at this thing. After I sold it, the stock doubled. The stock doubled. I had a hard time holding a 60-70% winner. And after I sold it, it doubled. That's why you use, and you would still be in it because it hasn't st closed below the 10 day yet. This is what happens sometimes. Like I have way too many things on my charts. I'm thinking about removing stuff. I actually removed one uh, moving average, like the 65 EMA <coughs> on the daily chart. I removed it um, because, you know, sometimes, you know, you look at too many things, you kind of Focus, you, you cannot lose focus on the important stuff. And in this case, it was the first close below the 10 day, which still hasn't happened. And you don't need to do any predictions like, oh, I have a distant that target for it. All you need to focus on, you sell half or a third or two thirds or whatever, whatever you feel like. But I would say around half after the first three to five days, Move your stop to break even, and then you just trail on the 10-day moving average. You don't need any predictions. It doesn't matter what the Fed says. It doesn't matter what China does. It doesn't matter what Trump says or does. You don't need to, to care about any of those things. Only thing you need to care about is the 10-day moving average. That's it. No rocket science involved. And position sizing is another thing, okay? Depends on how big your account is. Like, if you have a less than 100K, I would say you shouldn't do more than... You, you can put maybe, say, all your money in four stocks. So you can put up to 25% of your account in, any, in one stock. If you have a bigger account, let's say 100 to a couple of million, 100,000 to a couple of million, maybe you'll, you should maybe put in... More, no more than let's say just 20 percent in any given stock so if you have less than 100k you can have four stocks if you have 100k to a couple of million you can have five stocks and be fully invested and if you have more than a few million you can you should probably have even smaller but i mean it depends i mean you can still do like 20 percent in any given stock um, I personally like do smaller position nowadays, unless I have really high conviction and the stock is liquid, but you know, y that's something you will develop on your own. Like this is like super basic stuff I'm teaching. So, so, you know, if you're going to be fully invested, you shouldn't have more than four to five stocks in your portfolio. No more than that. <clears throat> and you shouldn't use margin if you have small accounts, there's no need. You're just gonna mess up and blow up. Well, I can have 20, 25 stocks in my portfolio. Right now, at 24 stocks, I'm heavily on margin. But I also have three uh, low, uh, short positions. Uh, and Tesla is a huge short position. Never mind, I actually got stopped out of Tesla. Never mind, I'm not short Tesla anymore. <clears throat> I got stopped out of this one. It, it went back into range. Taking a $65,000 loss on what I have left. <clears throat> I did lock in profits on Friday though, but overall, yeah, it, it couldn't break out, uh, break down. It had actually, if you look at it now, it had an undercut of the 20 day and now it's just reclaiming the range. I mean, Maybe in a couple of days, if it starts breaking out over this 1500, low 1500 area, maybe we can finally get a move to 2000. That would be epic. <clears throat> that would be epic. 
this one couldn't break down because the market is super strong. It should be relative strength on uh, a re relative weakness on Friday, but you know couldn't break down. Okay, I don't really have time to answer all the questions. There's a lot of questions. Let's see here. A spice, come on. <clears throat> ADR. No, spice is not a good buy. It's, it, ADR is 1.3%. If you really want to do the index trade, do SPXL. This one has ADR of 4%. <clears throat> no, I, I don't think spice. It's just too slow. I'm going to go through more of scanning and stuff tomorrow. Like I'm not gonna do everything in one one trade in one day. How much money? Uh, well, about 17 million more than most of you. Uh, and yeah, absolutely. You put your no. I always do uh, uh, stop market orders because if you don't get stopped on your limit order. And the stock keeps tanking, you know, you kind of lose a shitload of money. Yeah, the stream is gonna get uploaded <clears throat> uh, both on Twitch and to YouTube. So you have to just go back. I started like 40 minutes ago with the short swing trading school. So you can go back and look at it. Look at this Beely. Look at this thing from, from Friday entry. Look at this thing. I have to sell more. It's straight up. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to cut the stream now. I'm getting tired in my, in my throat. Uh, thanks for uh, joining. And... Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. I'm going to do another short or swing training school tomorrow. Show you more scans and stuff like that. <clears throat>